Greetings, this is Unit 7, Module 2, Session 1. The name of this home connection is Fraction Action. Make sure you put your name and number at the top. This is a two-pager also, even though it doesn't say so like it normally does. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, we're going to start by labeling the rest of the tenths and fifths on this number line. I would like to begin by pointing out that we have tenths along the bottom. Okay, one tenth, you can probably guess it's going to be two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths. But then I have fifths along the top. There are fewer of them, aren't there? And I'm just curious, does that make sense as you think about that? Why are there fewer boxes up top and more along the bottom? Could that be because uh, if we're talking about fifths, there should only be five? And if we're talking about tenths, there should only be ten? right? I'm, I'm hoping so, but maybe there's something on this page that could help us. So let me see if I can find it. Let's see. I put it somewhere on this page. Oh, I think I see it right there. Do you see this right here? Ah, uh, yes, here it is. So I took um, a 360 degree protractor and I divided it up into fifths, okay? So that means if I were to, you know, shade in one section of it, you know, this would be like one-fifth over here on this side. And this section over here would be one-fifth, so on and so forth, okay? So those are fifths. There are five of them. Uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Or that. <laughs> Let me put this back there. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, what I meant to do was this, one, two, three, four, five. I divided my circle into five pieces. If I were to cut each one of those in half, okay? Don't like that one. There we go. Now what am I working with? Well, now, like that original one-fifth that I was looking at, if I kind of shade this roughly, this this was what I this is one fifth, okay. Now I've divided all of those fifths in half, so now I'm working with tenths. So that means just one of the slivers is going to be a tenth, and there's a relationship between the two, isn't there? Because uh, two tenths, two of these, is the same as one fifth, which is why two of these red ones um, is one-fifth, or you could say they're individually tenths, okay? Now, that might not seem like much to you, but maybe it helps get some of the cobwebs out when, it, when we're talking about fractions. So let's continue labeling these tenths here because we know the bottoms are tenths. If you wanted to be very um, methodical about it, you could technically do something like uh, just writing the 10 on the bottom because we know we're doing tenths. Now, if any of you were asking, why are there only nine of them there? And maybe some of you didn't, but watch this. I have one-tenth, two-tenths, three-tenths, four-tenths, five-tenths, six-tenths, seven-tenths. They did the eight-tenths for you, nine-tenths. I thought there should be 10. Is anybody thinking that right now? Well, isn't one the same as 10 tenths? It is. And if you wanted to be super specific, we could even go through with our highlighter and count the segments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That is cut into 10 pieces. Okay, so, I, so from here to here is my first tenth. This is the second, tenth, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, the ninth. And then this one, that last tenth, our tenth, tenth, gets us to one. Okay? Now, on the flip side, if we take, uh, go to the top and we talk about fifths, okay? Once again, you might be saying to yourself, well, I know I should write them in order. Here's one fifth, here's two fifths, here's three fifths, here's four fifths. What about the five fifths? Well, once again, that's one right there. And if you wanted to be very technical and to be able to see it, then you would notice that this is my first fifth, here's my second fifth, here's my third, 
here's my fourth, and here's that last one that takes us to one. There's my fifth of the five pieces, okay? The relationship between the two is nice because you can easily see there's two tenths for every one fifth, okay? And the number relationship should make sense because if I were to take um, one fifth, ooh, that's not what I wanted. Ooh, where is it going? Here we go. If I took one fifth and I doubled both of the numbers, look at that. One fifth is the same as two tenths, which is what we just said. One fifth is the same as two tenths. Okay? I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but if you are a little rusty with fractions, maybe this is helping you. Uh, label the fourths on the number line. Well, they started us at zero, didn't they? And we're trying to get to one. So I kind of really think we should probably just start with our fourths. Hopefully this isn't too bright on your screen. But I would have my first fourth, second fourth, third fourth. And then, like we said before, one is the same as four fourths. And if I wanted to have a little fun here, I could point out with my highlighter that, yep, there's the first fourth, there's the second, there's the third, and there would be all four of them highlighted, okay? Uh, let's do the next one. Use the number lines above to help compare these fractions. Keep in mind that the number lines are exactly the same length. Complete each statement with less than, equal, or greater than. So we're going to compare 5 tenths to 1 tenth, okay? So let's do that. We're just going to go up to the number line, though, because that's going to be a little bit easier at this point. 5 tenths, 1 tenth. If I were to use a completely different color, uh, 5 tenths would take us from 0 all the way up to here, and 1 tenth would take us all the way to there. So I can see just by comparing these two lines that 5 tenths is way longer than 1 tenth. Let's see if I can get those to disappear. I don't know if I'll be able to. There we go. Ooh, there's my phone making all the noise. Sorry about that. So what are you going to write? What symbol are you going to write? The alligator has to eat the bigger number, so make that happen. I'm going to use, we'll just use um, red. Meow, meow, meow. Okay. So. And now we're going to go on to, um, I'm actually going to skip around because we're doing tenths and tenths. Uh, I'm going to do the fifths and tenths, fifths and tenths, because they're on the same number line. So I'm going to do four fifths and seven tenths. I'm going to go back up and I'm going to take a look. Four fifths would go to here. And seven tenths would go and stop there. So my four fifths is longer, isn't it? So I'm going to make sure the alligator eats the larger number. Four-fifths is larger. Two-fifths and three-tenths over here. I'm going to do this one next because they're on the same number line. Four, two-fifths, three-tenths. Here we go. Two-fifths uh, would be... And then three-tenths. Okay. And I can see just by drawing along the number line that... Two fifths is larger. Okay, let me get rid of those and we'll go back down here. And then we'll say two fifths is larger. Okay, now the next two down here, you probably can guess what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to figure out a way to compare one fourth and four tenths. Okay. If I wanted to do this quickly, I'm a little nervous to do it this way, but we'll do it anyway. Do you remember how we've done the multiples tables from the past few lessons where I count by fours and I count by tens, okay? So if I count, for, you know, 10, 20, um, 30, 40, Okay, or I can do um, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Ooh, and then I see a number that they have in common. Okay, 20 is a common denominator. 
the reason I'm doing that is so I can turn this bottom number into something that is the same for both so that I can easily compare to the top numbers. That's what makes the comparisons simple. So what do I have to take 10 times to make it a 20? Well, I'm going to take 10 times 2. If I take the denominator times 2, I have to do the same to the top. What do I get? I would get 8 in the numerator, 20 in the denominator, in case that one's ready to go. What am I going to take 4 times to get it to equal 20? Okay, I'm going to take it times 5 to get 20. Okay, and then, what am I, and then whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So I have to take that 1 times 5 to get 5. Now I can compare um, 5 twentieths to 8 twentieths, and I know that 8 is larger than 5. The alligator eats the larger number. There's my teeth, meow, 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 meow. And that one is done, okay? If I did the same thing on this side over here, and normally I leave some of these for you guys to do, but man, it's just nice to see this a couple times. And if you want to, pause this video and try it on your own and see if we have the same answer. But if I look at uh, this five and this four, and I want them to have the same denominator so that I can compare the top numbers, well, then I'm gonna do my table again. I know that some of you probably are good with the mental math, and I love that, but it's uh, hard to make a mistake when you make a table. So there's my five, there's my four, right? I'm just gonna take these two denominators put them up here, and I'm going to start counting by those numbers. So I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, that's hopefully enough. And then I'll count by 4s on the other side. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Oh, 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 look, 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 look. Right there, right there. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I now have that denominator that's common between the two. So I'm going to turn both of these fractions, <clears throat> the, my three-fifths and my two-fourths, I'm going to turn them into twentieths. And I'm going to ask myself the question, five times what is 20? Okay, well, five times four is 20. And whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. Three times four is 12. So this fraction here, three-fifths, is the same as 12 twentieths. Now let's go to this side over here, and we're going to do the exact same thing, and I'm going to have to do it really squishy, so bear with me. 4 times what is 20? Well, 4 times 5 is 20, and whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator, and 2 times 5 is 10. So even though this looks really messy because there's numbers everywhere, I now have fraction equivalents for 3 fifths, which is 12 twentieths, and I have a fraction equivalent of 2 fourths, which is 10 twentieths. Okay, and I can compare the 12 to the 10, and I know that the 12 is larger, so the alligator's going to eat that number. Were there other ways we could have done this? Absolutely. One way that you could have done that was maybe logic, using logic, is you could say two-fourths is what? One-half. How do I know that? Well, because if I cut both of those numbers in half, I would get one half. Another way that I could think of it is if I took a circle and I cut it up and I had two of the four, that is one half. Now, what about three-fifths? Okay, that's a little bit harder to understand, but we know that three is more than half of five, isn't it? So I know that this fraction is larger than this fraction because this one is more than a half. I don't even have to know exactly how much more than a half, but if I know that two-fourths is exactly one-half, okay, that's what we figured out, and three-fifths is more than that, well, there you go. I know that one's larger. That's a faster way to do it, but it doesn't necessarily give you the mathematical surety um, that maybe finding the common denominator does, okay? Woo, this has been a long video already. Let's, let's dig in. I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of work to do here, okay? This is represent each fraction on the fraction bar. So you're going to shade three of the five pieces in, okay? You're going to shade seven of the ten pieces in, five of the eight pieces in. Then you're going to complete the equation below to show how much more it would take to make one, okay? I'm going to do one, and I'm going to show you in red what we have. One, two, three, okay? Step one done. Three-fifths plus what equals one? 
Well, it has to be what's left over, which I, I'll shade in green, okay? How much is left right there? I'm hoping that you're going to say two-fifths. The nice part is, or the rule is, if you can make the numerators add up to your denominator, you have one, because we know five-fifths is one, so if we were going to say three-fifths, which is what they asked us to shade in, one, two, three-fifths, three-fifths plus what is one, it has to be what's left over. And whatever you add should be the same as the denominator. So that three plus two is five. Five-fifths is one, okay? And I'm going to let you do that for the next two, okay? Fraction equivalents can be interesting. Uh, but I find that drawing and shading can be very helpful. We're going to shade in um, the fraction that they want, and then we're going to sketch an equivalent. So here it said shade in one-third, and they shaded in one of the three bars so that they're done. They cut each bar in half to make sixths, right? Because if you double each of these, well, if you doubled each of these, you would then have six pieces. How many of them are shaded in? Two of them, right? So this one-third here, okay, is the same as two-sixths. That's what they figured out, okay? Uh, there's only three examples. I don't want to do too many of them for you, but let's take a look. If I was going to shade in one-fourth, okay, that means I'm going to shade in one of the four pieces. There we go. I'm done. Then if I wanted to find a fraction equivalent, just like they did above, I could split all of them in half. And if you weren't sure what happened, you doubled all the pieces. But you could count them, couldn't you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're working with eighths. And then I have to figure out, well, how many eighths is that? Well, it should be double. How many of them are there? One, two. So I'm going to put two eighths. Okay? I'm going to have you uh, do this next one on your own. Pause the video, give it a try, and then meet me at question six. Mariana got a long piece of red ribbon from her aunt. She gave one-fourth of the ribbon to her little sister. She gave two-sixths of the ribbon to her best friend. Uh-oh, who got more of the ribbon? Oh... So one-fourth versus two-sixths. Interesting. Maybe I could write it out. One-fourth. And then I'm going to leave room, and I'm going to say two-sixths. Now, you might know in your head what the answer is. You don't have to, but you might already. But I'm going to zoom in here, and we're going to, we're going to do kind of what we did on the previous page. Or maybe I'll let you do it. Uh, that might be better off. So once again, I'm looking at these denominators and I'm thinking, oh, they don't match. So it's hard to compare these fractions because you're either going to say uh, one's greater, they're equal, or one's less. Okay? It's up to you. But if you wanted to do the same style that we've been doing before, you would put your four and your six in a little table so that you can find the multiples. You know, count by fours, four, eight, twelve. Whoops. And I'm going to stop there because I know that when you double six, you get twelve. So I would consider this to be a common denominator. You would convert, you would convert each of these fractions probably by saying four times three, one times three, and then six times two, two times two. That will give you the twelfths on the bottom that you need so that you can compare and see who did get the longer, who got more ribbon than the other person, okay? Um, and then, I know this is, kind of, this, this is kind of working up to the challenge, okay? So you're going to figure out who got more ribbon by finishing that, okay? Uh, you'll also be able to answer B right away because that's what we're doing is we're figuring out which one of these numbers is larger. So if you know who got more, Mariana uh, or her little sister, then you also know which symbol to write in here. If you do all that sketching down here, you're done with C as well. 
The only thing that might be slightly challenging would be uh, what fraction of the piece of ribbon did Mariana have left for herself? And if you convert, if you put that fraction in twelfths, you can even make a number line, okay? And you could do, uh, let's see, this is going to be challenging, isn't it? That's four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, I shouldn't have done it that way. Let's see if that works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, then I just divided it into twelfths. And then um, you could label it if you wanted to. That's up to you. Zero to one. You could label all the twelfths, like one twelfth, two twelfths. And you can add up both of the ribbons that you have up here and figure out how much of it is left. And that would be your answer. So a number line might be really helpful uh, because that's kind of what we've been working with, bars and number lines. Okay. Whew, there's a lot going on here, and I really hope um, you found something on here that was useful. Make sure if you have questions, find someone. Ask them those questions so you can clarify your understanding of fractions, okay? Check you later.